yeast starter. I've got a uh, big Belgian blonde I'm doing uh, tomorrow night. So um, I'm making a yeast starter. Uh, it's going to be around 10 percenter, so I need to make a big yeast starter uh, to pitch into there. The way I've started is I've got two pints of uh, water in a pan, and then I've got one cup of DME or uh, light mole extract, um, and, and that's enough for a five gallon heavy, uh, heavy ABV uh, beer. Uh, if you've got a lighter ABV beer or something down in you know the five gallon range and it's only a four five percenter, you can quite happily get away with one pint uh, to a quarter cup of DME or light mold extract. The um, extract I use and I use it every time. Um, everyone's different, obviously. I use the Pilsner, very the light Pilsner. Seems to do a good job. Hasn't got a lot of flavour to it. Um, it seems to be very efficient um, and easy going. So all you do is you put your water in the pan, turn on your water. I usually use hot water. Um, and before it boils, uh, put the DME and other light mold extract in and uh, stir it all around. Get it all mixed up and then bring it to the boil for 10 minutes and then, uh, and then make sure it's all mixed in nice and neat. There's no crunchy bits or floaties in there. It should mix in pretty easy if you don't get it, uh, the water dead cold or too hot. And, um, and then, yeah, boil it for 10 minutes. And then uh, once it's boiled for 10 minutes, uh, you can cool it in the pan or um, if you've got the proper glass one like I've got here, you can put boiling water into it. It withstands it. It's, I don't know, it's for like labs and stuff like that. It's definitely a great investment. They're very cheap. And um, once you've got it in there, you pitch your yeast. Um, I'll, uh, I'll come back when I get it ready and cool down and, um, and show you what it looks like when it goes into the thing. This is what it looks like uh, after I've mixed it in. And it's, it's mixed into the water. It hasn't boiled yet, but it's coming up to the boil. And then, yeah, as I said, I'll boil it for 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> the mixture of uh, two pints to a half a cup of light DME or the pills in the one I use, it should give you a starting gravity of 1040. And 1040 isn't high, um, but it's not too low. And you want a lower gravity uh, on, a, on a yeast starter, the wort that goes into the yeast starter. Um, so the yeast is still in its growth stage. Uh, it, you know, it's still still eating, it hasn't you know, consumed and, and stopped, uh, stopped growing basically. So it's called the growth stage and then it'll still be in its healthiest when you get it into your work later on. Okay, so We've got it cooled down, so what we're going to do now, check the temperature, make sure it's, uh, it's where we want it. Everything's got to be pretty sanitised at this stage. So we turn on our thing and then I just put it straight in there, get the temperature off it straight away. And um, I'm, looking at, I'm looking for 65 to 67 um, because that's going to be where I'm going to pitch it at. It says it's 60, 66 now. So that's fine. <clears throat> um, so I've got a packet of yeast. Gonna use Abbey yeast in this one because it's a Belgian blonde scissors and a stir stick. I just put them all on a piece of alfoil and spray them all with star sand. Uh, make sure everything's uh, coated up with star sand so it's uh, as sterile as it can be. And then cut open the yeast. And then it's just a matter of uh, pouring the yeast straight in. Make sure you get it all, leave any in the vat, it's pretty expensive. And then um, put back your alfoil on top again, still make sure this is all sanitized uh, very well. And then the sterile, the uh, stir bar is uh, all sanitized as well, put that in. Put him on top of your plate and turn your plate on. And off it goes, hang on. A little bit of a shake, put it in. So you can hear the rattle of the stir bar going around. 
and there it goes now. And then we leave that there for uh, 12 to 18 hours. Um, you can uh, remove 80% of the cleared, um, cleared fermentable out and uh, just leave the slurry, the white slurry at the bottom and mix that up again uh, and put it into your, uh, into your wort to uh, ferment it. Otherwise you can just pour it all in. Um, I'm sort of between the two, I, I don't know really. I just, use, I just usually put it all in because I only make a, a small one usually and uh, away it goes. So hopefully that's helped um, some. And uh, if there's any other questions, if I got anything wrong, let me know down down the bottom. And uh, if you like the video, subscribe. See you next time. Bye. It's been going for a couple of hours now, um, so that's what it looks like once you get the stir bar going and it's uh, it's whizzing around a million mile an hour. It can go up or down, but I think that's fine. I'm not really sure, you know, the do's or don'ts on how fast. I just like to know that it's churning around in there. And yeah, typically I'll run it right up until a few hours before I'm ready to put it in and I will stop it and, um, and, and until uh, it sort of stops spinning around and then it'll flocculate. The yeast will flocculate down the bottom um, and then there'll be the clear liquid on the top and then you can decant 80% of that clear liquid and then just leave the slurry or, or the yeast uh, down the bottom the, the creamy stuff um, and then just pour that in I'm, I'm not really sure about either way or off flavors or whatever happens I, I sort of I, I pretty much just put it in unless it's a huge yeast starter unless it's like a two liter um, and I'm splitting it between a couple of different ten gallons or five gallons I'll, I'll pour a little bit of the clear off otherwise I won't worry about it but um, anyway happy brewing